number because the PVC collection has not gone round. They haven't said that the people who have collected the PVCs are 93 million. They said the people who are on the register that could vote are 93 million. So, which means more than half of Nigerians will, will not vote. And even that same number could be reduced if we do not do something really, really seriously to get our PVCs and go on election day and vote. Remember that if you do not vote, you are also voting. Because anybody who wins uh, will win because you did not vote as well. Because if someone else could have won and you, you didn't go to vote, it meant that you have given your vote without your... <laughs> without without consciously doing so to the person who won. So take it the way you see it. Anything where you see, take out like that. That's how we say on the streets. Anyway, well, our guest for today, I refrained from calling his name because if I called his name before you seeing him, you would have been expecting maybe uh, speaking in tongues throughout. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Toby Adeboyega. He's not a preacher, but he, he well, I don't know if you, it's, as a part-time job, you do that. But he, today, he's here as a CEO of a co short uh, because we're talking housing deficit in Nigeria. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Hello, how are you doing? Well, I'm fine. Uh, uh, or are you related? So, I am Toby Adeboyega, not Pastor Toby Adeboyega. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see a lot of people with my DMs, I'm like, oh, Pastor, Pastor Toby. But I'm like, yo, I am not Pastor Toby. You should be collecting types. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say just one of those rare coincidences that we bear the same name, the same surname and all, but uh, yeah. I'm not Pastor Toby. <laughs> okay, well, well, at least you shared a good choice. <laughs> Well, this is Toby Adeboyega, who is not a pastor. <laughs> and um, today we're talking about a housing deficit in Nigeria. And Nigeria, with all the resources, with all the land, with all everything that we have, a lot of people are, are wondering, we always wonder, why, what is the challenge? Why is housing in the 21st century still a problem in Nigeria? Um, so for me, um, Lagos as a case study, um, I would say... The problem lies a lot with the government. Um, of course, we all know that what makes a location very good to sell for for real estate has to do with accessibility. Um, I use the Lake Ekwe Expressway for example. Immediately that road was fixed, we saw a lot of um, people going to that access. And um, that being said, um, the level of development has aided the price to skyrocket. I mean. How many people in Lagos can afford to pay a six million era for a three-bedroom apartment, for instance? Mm -hmm. um, it goes to say the government can do a lot more in terms of um, partnership with um, developers and in terms of uh, making av availability for people, for the average Lagosian. Um, back then, I said earlier, back then you had estates like the Jack on the Estates where everybody could afford Jack on the Estates. Now, Jack on the Estates in the solar right now is still standing. Jack on the estate in Jack on the right now is standing. That was, that was a government who was ready to provide housing solution. If you look at what the government is doing now, it is somewhat impossible for the average Lagosia to afford those, those kind of real estate that's coming up in the market right now. Yeah, the ones that are coming up are mostly from the private sector, right? Of course. Okay, but even when the government builds, maybe at least at the national level, mm. they, they put it up for, for sale to bidders who can afford millions of times, I mean, <laughs> it's a low cost, and, and you can't even afford it. So it's, it's such an irony, because you say you're doing low-cost housing estate, and you find out that some guys who's the head of the pastoral has taken 10 of the house already, or someone has taken five of the house already, or the guys who are at the top of the cadre of the, of the government of, um, um, organization, they've taken most of those properties. They're leaving nothing to the guys down below, because they can't even afford those houses. So if we're saying it will be a low-cost housing, then leave it as a low cost housing. If we're saying it will be one you can pay maybe 100,000 monthly or 100,000 quarterly, then leave it at that. But don't tell us it's a low cost housing estate and you're expecting someone to pay 35, 40 million. How is that, how is that going to work? Now, what, what, is the, what is the thing in real estate that really takes the money? That, well, what is it about building a house that is so expensive? expensive. So everyone would always tell you. Dollar has gone up. <laughs> mm -hmm. even, even even those who don't use dollars for anything, that dollar has gone up. Um, we all know that what the bag of cement was five years ago is not what it is right now. And I'll tell you this for a fact: it won't be the same price in two years' time. So because of all of these changes in the raw materials, of course, um, 
prices of real estate is going to go up. Now, access to funding. Um, a lot of developers who have um, got to work with will tell you that um, it's one where even if they're taking funding from the bank, the kind of profits, the kind of merger they have to pay, it's quite a lot. So, or you've take, you're taking money from, from uh, a microfinance bank or something. So you find out that when you take that money to build, you have a limited period of time to pay back. Because the longer you, 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 you don't pay, the longer you keep the money, then the more profits you have to pay or the more percentage you have to pay. So that's why the prices would, would be up definitely because the guy has sourced for funding from somewhere else where he has to pay a percentage maybe on a monthly basis. So he just wants to build, sell, get his cash and leave the table. But that's the private sector. When we're talking about government, do they have the same challenges? Because I'm wondering why sometimes we know that land in Nigeria, mm. basically land belongs to the government. Of course. So they don't have to like pay as of much course. as a private person has to do. So what are those... Ingredients. So, for, I, I, for me, I would say in government, the major problem will be style of leadership, will be the leader. I mean, you go to other parts of the world, you see where the government is building a lot of um, um, estates, say, locals. Um, uh, for, uh, the UK, for instance, you have what you call council houses. Yeah. That's one where the, the council has, has, has got acquired the house and are giving it to people to pay on a monthly basis, something very little. Um, it goes to say the leaders we have. I mean, if you're a leader who has the interest of people at heart, the land is there for you. The finances is there for you. You're not going to take loan from anybody. So what will it cost us to say, we would build this place and give it to our people to pay for it for the next 30, 40 years, however long it takes them. So again, it would boil down to the leadership style or the kind of leaders we have governing us in Nigeria. Okay. Major pr uh, reason we're talking about this today is yeah. that... Um, Soon we'll have a change of leadership. Of course, you know, <laughs> well, even if it's the same person being elected back into office, mm. that's a second tenure. Yeah, maybe the policies will change and all that. Of so course. What are some of these policies that government needs to look into so that they themselves, I'm talking about the government, can provide this housing for the people, and then the private developers mm. can also have uh, the opportunity to do things for cheaper. So I would say, um, first and foremost, um, there has to be access to funding for the developers. Um, also mortgage for the end users. Um, you can count the number of mortgage banks you have in Nigeria. And even if you go on the mortgage bank, you know the kind of documents, you know the rudiments for you to get a, a property from, from a mortgage bank. It's not a walk in the park, basically. So um, access to funding, having a good mortgage system. Um, and I feel the government's the Ministry of Housing or um, whatever, whether at the federal level or state level, can do a lot more with ensuring these houses are available and also not just available, accessible to those who they've um, built those things for and not the guys at the, at the top part at all. So if there's, there's a functional government, if there's a government who has the interest of the people at heart to say, we're putting attention to housing, they were putting attention to petrol, to other things, we're going to put attention to housing. And I think we would, it would solve a lot of these housing issues we have in Nigeria right now. Okay, but okay, that's government. And now let's look at the, the partnership between... Mm government and, and private, private sector. sector. I, I'm interested in that because a, a lot of times they say a uh, private partnership with the government will lead to a lot of good <laughs> for us. So uh, tell us how this can work. Um, so for, for the private um, um, for First the of private all, has, entity, it, has there been a relationship like that for now? Okay. Is the there, government there, there, interested there, in what you're doing? There has been. Um, so for instance, you have in Lagos State, you have what you call the LSDPC um, housing um, estates and it's done in partnership with the private sector. So they are the ones who kind of um, build this um, apartment for government. And you find out that, of course, it, it goes well, but it goes down to the main point of funding. I mean, um, in most of those cases, the private sector, you are the ones who, the government can only say this is the land. So it's what's called like a JV, joint venture. So the government is saying this is the land, now you have to source for funding. You know, getting money from government for anything can be a bit difficult. Mm. But for the land, yes, this is the land. But you as a developer, how are you going to build that land? You need to source for your funding. Anyway, you're going to source for your funding. So until, until that whole finance um, ethic is a bit streamlined, I think we'll still be running the same circle over and over again. Today that we have you in the studio, yeah. a lot of Lagosians are complaining that because of developers... <laughs> Rents are going up. <laughs> you could rent a house today. Tomorrow it has been sold to a developer or Definitely. given out to a developer. I don't know whether you buy it or you, you take it and use for some time. I yeah. don't know how it works. But because of that, 
every every street, so long as it has a gate, mm. it has become an estate. An estate. You know, so so <laughs> what what are you really doing to make sure that the people do not have to complain anymore? Or is it business, business, you don't care what happens to the people? Do you have any plans to make sure that these things will also help the, the ordinary man who cannot afford a five million naira per month house? Um, <laughs> so, um, like I said, a lot of these challenges really would have to do with source of funding. So, for instance, now, um, I want to build a block of flats of 30 units, and it's going to cost me 10 billion to build. Now, I've gotten a 10 billion loan from wherever I've gotten it from, and I have a two years to pay back. Yeah? Um, I will be more of the business side than the humanitarian side. Because I know I have I have something to meet. I have a I have a, a, a point to, to get to, to pay someone's money. So as far as it will be concerned, I would say it would always be more of the business side, sadly. Um, to make it more of the humanitarian side, it has to do with a lot of government interference. Um, we cannot overemphasize how much government has to be involved in these things. Um, for an average private sector person, it's, it's our profitability. We have our CSR, we have our charities, all of that, but in terms of our core business, it's profit. It's what just want to make our profit and leave the table. So it would always be about the business. Uh, <laughs> it, would always, <laughs> it, would always, it would always be about the business, sadly. And Again, I said this, yeah, real estate in Lagos is quite pricey. Sincerely. Is it peculiar to Lagos? I think it's peculiar to Lagos. Um, so, for instance, you can't get a land of 5 million in Shongotedo anymore. You can't. Mm. You can't even get a land of 5 million in Lakowe anymore. You have to be going far. Maybe you're approaching Ekwe. Now, why you would hear that is because, oh, there's Dangote Refinery coming to the Bejileki. There's a new port coming to Bejileki. So all of these are in work. So therefore, it has kind of increased the cost of real estate in that access because there's a lot coming into that access. So the average man now has to go as far as Ekwe or almost Ogun State Jebu to buy a land of 5 million era. Mm, interesting. <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> So I was thinking you were going to tell us uh, from this time to this time, you know, things are going to get better. Now we are going to a good. No, <laughs> all of us are going there. When we go back to the village, we are all in Lagos. The, the truth is, not to scare people, but it will always get worse in terms of pricing and distance. Um, as Even with government's intervention, because you've, you've outlined some of the things that you feel government should do. True, yeah. What if government really looks into it and does the kind of things that you want them to do? If government looks into it deeply, I mean, not just on the surface, look into it deeply, maybe create a committee or create a department for that, then something can be done. Who regulates the developers? The government. Who gives the developers the licenses and all of that is needed to be done? The government. So everything is... Basically, with the government, then it's in their hands. So, if the government is able to regulate, if the government is able to say, we would make your documentation process seamless, but you cannot sell beyond this and this in this axis, then we can't because there's, there's, a, there's a law that you can't go beyond this. So, unless the government is heavily involved, then it will just keep getting worse. But are you saying that all the agencies involved in this are not doing enough or that they are? Short staffed, or I don't even understand because they have uh, Ministry of Land, yes. you know, Housing, Housing, all those kinds of things. Are they not enough? Bear in mind, money? bear in mind that the average ministry is that generates money. So there's there's a part of generating money. There's a part of where we are having the the interest of people at heart. Now um, you see these guys, Lagos State, whatever tax and law. Once they come to your property, the first thing first they're putting the X sign. Mm. So once that comes to your property. You have to go to Alausa. Once you go to Alausa, money must exchange hands. Legally or illegally? What? <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> no, let us know. <laughs> we need to. Know. Anyhow, you want to say it, but well, well, legally, because um, um, for that to have happened, then there's 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 something the um, there's an oversight oversight of something with the developer. Um, but then again, money is exchanging hands. Now, for every couple a developer a developer puts in erecting the property. It's going to go into the cost of the property, and therefore, it's going to affect the price of that property. Well, so do we have do we have some short term 
short-term solutions, as it were, things that, you know, can just give us some respite and say, okay, uh, we are here now, but mm. when we take this solution, we can, we can at least get some solace. So I would say um, we need to do a lot more with mortgage banks. Um, we need to do a lot more, a lot more with mortgage banks, um, where you're able to take, without too much stress, you can take a mortgage for 30, 40 years. I you know the house is yours, because sincerely, if you are renting a, an apartment in Lake if it's one right now, or Ikate, you're looking at six million per year. Now, imagine you're putting that same six million into your house mortgage. In 30 years, how much would you have paid? That's enough for you to acquire the property already. Okay. Let's just put a, a stop here for yeah. now and enable us to take the news. And when we return, we'll just say something about, because you, uh, it's not just real estate. Yeah. This is something called short lets. Short lets, yes. When I was talking to a colleague about this short let, he said, ah, those people, they do short lets. <laughs> <laughs> So that we, we get to know what it is. Maybe yeah. these are some of the things that we can take advantage of, course, of all that. Of course. Still the run up, and I'm still here with Toby Adeboyega. Or might I add, Toby Misson Ade Adeboyega, <laughs> so that there will be that uh, uh, <laughs> difference. With Pastor Toby. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to start saying Tantarabaroba so quickly. Okay. <laughs> We're just having fun here, but it's not so much fun if we are talking about real estate, because Lagos is reputed to have like uh, maybe 10% of the population of Nigeria yeah. Yeah. resident here. And more are still coming yeah. in cars, in trains, and in, in trucks, yeah. lorries. <laughs> people who have never been to Lagos, mm. every day people enter Lagos in thousands and mm. they're not ready to go out. It's like, it's like bringing uh, fairly used cars. Cars never come here and go out go again. Out, of course. Uh, second hand clothing don't come here and go out again. <laughs> Nothing all. comes here and that goes, goes out, out again. again. And that's how Lagos is. So mm. it's scary. If all these people come in and they don't have where to lay their head. Mm. Like I was saying in my opening, sometimes when you're on the mainland, you're passing very early in the morning, you see people uh, sleeping on the bridges and under the bridges. Definitely. The foot bridge especially. Definitely. Now, you come to the island where it's supposed to be like the posh yeah, area. <laughs> you see people sleeping on the curbs. It's Definitely. not even, they don't have a bridge to sleep under. They just sleep by the roadside, Definitely. even if it's raining. Hmm. And housing has become a worrisome thing. It's been there for a long time. But yeah. we were thinking, if the new government is coming, what can they do to make sure housing is available for everybody? We've talked extensively about uh, some of those things, that yeah. the policies that they need to put in place. Before yeah. we end, I'd like you to, to still go back there for purpose of re um, emphasis, yeah. rather. But for now, let's try to know the types of uh, real estate that you have. Uh, first of all, we talked about the one that you are involved in. Uh, you are CEO of a co a co -short -let. Yes, Yeah, yes. Like I said in, in a funny way, people say, ah, oh, short let is a short time. <laughs> So explain to us these various types of uh, real estate that you do. Okay, so um, we have the short lets, we have the rental, we have the sales. So the I'll start with the sales. So the sales is a normal, you want to buy a property and all of that, either for investment purpose or for living purpose. Then you have the rental, the rental which, of course, you rent for a year or two years. And just back to what we're saying with um, the housing challenges in Lagos, um, the Lagos State Law, tenancy law says you shouldn't take more than one year Right. tenant rent you have some landlord say to you i want two years and its statement would be the Lagos state government built my house for me and of mm. course he, he's right i mean the government didn't build the house for him he built it by himself so he's able to determine what he wants to do so um you have the rental then you have the shortlets which is what um we are it's our core so it's like your regular airbnb um, so what we do basically is um, we take up these properties, we put them on, on um, daily rental, more like a hotel kind of system, but in an apartment way. So meaning, you know, like a hotel is just a single room and all of that. But yeah, you have maybe two rooms, three rooms, you have a kitchen, you have, so it's like a home away from home, basically. So you are in, you are in a, what we try to say, a home better than your own home in most cases. So basically, mm. that's yeah. Mm. <laughs> he, he has put on his, what, his marketing <laughs> cap and his <laughs> like that. But but now that makes it more scary because yeah, if you're renting a house for a year, yeah, even if you have to pay for two years, yeah, uh, it will be more cost effective. It will be cheaper than just. 
paying for a short time, I, I get. Yeah. So, um, the, like I said earlier on, um, there, are two, there are two sides. There's the humanitarian, there's the business. Now, for shortlets, for the shortlet investor, for the shortlet management company, we're happy doing our shortlets. We're fine with it. But to the end user, he's not totally happy with it because yeah. he wants like a long stay kind of thing. But for us, we want the daily coming, three days you leave. Someone that comes in five days leaves. Someone that comes in one month leaves. So we make okay, more money you're, than that. you're doing a course in Lagos and you have to stay for three months. Do you, you understand? Just get you a just short take shortlets. And, and it's, it's very easy. It's to very easy, that. yeah, because uh, most. Or not most, all of these apartments, they come with, um, of course, beautifully furnished interior designing, electricity, um, water, um, internet. So all you're doing is just you come with your bags, that's all. Uh, there's even a cleaner. In some cases, we have a chef if you want someone to prepare your meals for you. So it's like a opulence panache lifestyle. <laughs> oh, dear God. Okay, now, let's drive it home. Now, if the government will say, okay, we want to take up... Uh, some of these things and do yeah. them for the benefit of our people. Yeah. What kind of it do you think they can do easily and make life easy for the people? You've mentioned uh, sales, you've mentioned short lead, you've mentioned uh, uh, rentals. Rental. Yeah. So which of these ones do you think the government so, can comfortably do? So I would say the government can come in all aspects. Depends on the level of the end user. So for instance, um, someone who is maybe the government's level 10, level 12, can afford to say, I want to do the, I want to do the buy, where um, I have 30 years in service. So between now and when I finish my service, I should, I should be done paying up for this apartment. Or you have one where um, the government... Yes, well, when you talk about the mortgage. We talk about mortgage, exactly. Where um, the government says, because in Lagos, it is hard to find a property that you can rent for just two or three months. So for instance, I'm coming from Abuja into Lagos for a conference for 10 days. I can't find a property, an empty property to rent for 10 days. Now, because if you rent an empty property, you now have to start thinking about how to furnish it. You're not going to sit on the bare floor. So that is where we come in with the shortlet. Like, okay, forget about trying to get an empty space. Come into this already uh, made up space for you. Just come with your bags and then you, you flow in. So the government can come in that also where you have people stay on a, on a short time basis. Another challenge I see is I've seen a lot of people who maybe live in Nikorodu. And then they have to work in Lekki, for instance, now. Yeah. We all know transportation in Lagos can be a lot of bottleneck. So they look for a, a place to just put their heads for like, work, like Monday to Friday and then go back home by the weekend. So the government can have little, little condos like that, like studio apartment, condos, one bedrooms. Just it could be like a whole block of flat. Yeah. And then just have it um, where people can pay on a daily basis, something, something very affordable for anyone to be able to afford. The government can come in that also. Yeah, when you're talking government, you say affordable. How affordable is the private uh, <laughs> ones? This so shop, let's for, for instance. For the private, it ranges. Um, the least you will find um, is about 30,000 per day. And the most expensive we have on our platform is about 250,000 per day. <laughs> okay. That's no service for the average <laughs> Nigerian. Uh, but um, all hope is not lost, is it? Um, Some people say there's no longer space to build. So anywhere that building will be put up in Lagos State, it, you have to break another one to do that. So again, it depends on what part of Lagos. Um, we all know everybody wants to come to the island. I mean, we are getting to a stage where not everybody. Okay, most people. Okay, okay. pardon me, most people. We are coming to a stage where the island itself might be a state of its own because a lot of people are coming. Like, if you look at it, really, out of ten. 10, of 10 friends living on the island, maybe only one or two was born and bred on the island. A lot of them came in from the mainland into the island. Mm. So we're getting to the stage now where um, the shortlet is really taking over rental in Lagos. So I was giving an example earlier on. Now in, some developers will build an apartment and then um, 10 block of flats. And out of the 10, about nine of them are all shortlets. So where is the one for someone to rent on a normal yearly basis? You can't find that anymore. And it would keep getting worse. Of course, well, we like it because we make money from it. But then again, we cannot take away the humanitarian aspect where people need to find places to live. Okay. Every, the question I'm going to ask you now is what you have been saying throughout this, thing, this time that we've been talking. Uh, let's assume that you just have a one-on-one -on -one with an incoming governor or a sitting governor. What will be your advice? Because Lagos really needs housing. What would be your direct advice to this person 
if he gives you a listening ear? For me, three pointers. One, make it make housing a core of your governance. I mean, make it create a if you can create a low cost housing de department of low cost housing. Create like let that be that um, entity that attention is fully on um, solving the problem of housing in Lagos State. Mm -hmm. Two, make funding accessible. Um, also, I would say um, the whole process of um, documentation of um, for building and all of that, you can make it seamless. Um, I've had people who say they've tried to get their CEO of O for like two, three years. Mm -hmm. um, I know it could be a very rigorous um, um, process to get all of these documents from Lagos State. Make those available. And, most, and, and the fourth and major will be Give the people mortgages. I mean, let people be able to say, instead of paying this money for my rent, I'm paying this money into a mortgage, and at the end of 30 years, this house belongs to me. Okay, well, <laughs> we've been talking with uh, Toby Adeboyega, and uh, he's into real estate, and uh, what he does is he's a chief executive officer of Eco Shortlet, and we've been talking housing because the more the population grows, the more. Uh, the need for people to have a place to lay their head. And Lagos, that has 10% of the entire population of Nigeria, should be thinking more about housing. So whoever is coming in as the next governor of Lagos State come May 29th should have this, according to Toby, should have this at the very fore of his administration, housing for the people. Because someone who doesn't have a house will have to survive like a street person and sometimes is detrimental to the, the society. Well, we'd like to say thank you to you, Toby, you for coming on the show. <laughs> it's very, very enlightening. <laughs> we'll be you. looking for plots in Ogun State. <laughs> 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 I hope that never comes to happen anyway. So well, whoever you are, the, the, the thing that you can do as well is to make sure that you get your PVC. Let's um, vote in the right people who will take the right decisions to make life a little bit easier for all of us. Your PVCs will be at the ward le level till the 15th of this month, so we're hoping that you get there and get your PVCs. After that, it might have to go back to the local government uh, headquarters of INEX so that you can go get it there. And we know that it will be more cumbersome going there to get your PVC. So make effort the remaining four days uh, to the return of those PVCs to go get them so that you can be eligible to vote in 2023 that we've been talking all about. And we also appeal to INEC. You said that the collection of PVC will end on the 22nd or thereabout of January. Uh, why not just leave these PVCs still at the ward level until the end of the, the collection date? I don't know why you didn't extend it to 25th, because the election is 25th of February, to make it just one month to election day. But however, maybe you have your own um, uh, challenges. Whatever challenges you might have, maybe you can still extend the day or the, the time for these PVCs to be at the ward level so that people can collect it. It's been a wonderful run with you today, and we're hoping that we are going to connect again tomorrow on the program. In the meantime, remember, be a responsible Nigerian, be patriotic, and do your bid and leave the rest to God. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. See you tomorrow. <laughs>